Hey, welcome. Uh, today we're going to look at some techniques to help make our process of finding zeros to polynomials that cannot be solved by factoring techniques just a bit easier. Now the current method we have are simply factoring techniques. Beyond that, it's a guess and check method using long division or synthetic division. Uh, to help make this easier, we're going to look at something called the upper bound rule and the lower bound rule. These rules will help us eliminate some of our possible solutions so we can narrow down our choices to make this process just a bit easier and faster. Okay, remember at any time you can go ahead and pause the video and rewind and listen to concepts again. So let's go ahead and take our notes out and we'll begin. Okay, the first thing we have to look at is what we call the rational zero theorem. The rational zero theorem says if f of x is equal to a sub n x sub n plus dot 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 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 0 and it has integer coefficients then every rational 0 of f has the following form p divided by q is equal to the factor of constant term a sub 0 divided by the factor of a leading coefficient a sub n. Now essentially what our theorem is saying is that every possible zero or every zero to this polynomial and this is how we represent polynomials mathematically so don't let this scare you it's just any polynomial you can think of so again it's what it's saying is every zero to this polynomial that's rational has the form of the factor of the constant term which we're going to designate as p so we'll call this guy p over a factor of the leading coefficient we're going to call this guy q so every zero that's rational has the form p divided by q or one of its factors. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how that works. Okay, so in our example, example one, we're going to list the possible rational zeros, and then we're going to use them to illustrate the upper and lower bound rules. So let's go ahead and write this function down. f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. And the first thing we want to list are our possible rational zeros. Okay, so we're going to call our constant term, he's our p term. And our leading coefficient is our q term. So what we want to do is list all the possible factors of both of these. There we go. Let's get back on track here, list all the possible factors of these. So I want to know what P divided by Q looks like in terms of its factors. Starting with P, all the factors of 12, we have 1 and 12. Don't forget negative 1 and negative 12, so we have to get the pluses and the minuses. We have 2 and 6, both positive and negative. We have plus or minus 3 and 4, plus or minus 4 and 3 plus or minus 6 and 2, and finally, plus or minus 12. Oop, got hung up there. Let me rewrite the 12. Our Q, our constant Q is a 1, and 1's a beautiful thing because the only factors are 1 are plus and minus 1. 1 times 1 and negative 1 times negative 1. Now, 1 on the bottom makes our list of factors a lot shorter, so that's a good thing. So our list of possible zeros or roots, we're going to use synthetic division and see if they try to find their one, is simply our numerator. It's 1 over 1, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1 is simply 2. So again, like I said earlier, it's simply the numerator because all these guys will be over Q, which in Q is 1. So we're going to have plus or minus 3 plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Okay, so our list that we get to choose from of real rational zeros are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus the negatives. We have 12. And we're hoping of these 12 numbers that at least one zero is there. We may run in a case where all our zeros are irrational numbers or complex numbers. So we got to be aware of that. 
All right, so our next part is using synthetic division. So let's set synthetic division up, and we're simply going to choose a number. Okay, so we look at our constants. We're in descending order. All terms are there. So I have a 1. I have a 2. I have a negative 11 and a positive 12. And I think the 0 I'm going to start with first is, let's just choose 6. Actually, let's choose 4. 4 is a little smaller. Let's see what happens. So using synthetic division, I bring the 1 down. 4 times 1 is 4. 2 times 4, 2 plus 4 is 6. Add down and multiply. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 plus a negative 11 is a positive 13. And 4 times 13, 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1, it looks to be 52. And add down, that is 64. With 64 being my remainder, I know that 4 is not a 0. A 0 will have a remainder of 0. So he's not a root, he's not the number we're looking for. But here's what I can say. Because we used a positive root to check, so that's key, it has to be positive. And all our coefficients in the quotient are positive, including the remainder. I can say that there are no zeros, no rational zeros, bigger than 4. He's an upper bound at this point. So numbers like positive 6 and positive 12, we don't have to try. And we know 4 doesn't work. So that being looking to be an upper bound, we got rid of the 4, the 6, and the 12. We've made our list just a bit shorter. Okay, so I'm going to jump back and let's try a negative number. So again, with the upper bound, it only works with positive numbers. And the resulting coefficients in the quotient all have to be positive. I'm going to try a lower bound number, so let's set up our synthetic division again. So 1, 2, negative 11, positive 12. And this time let's choose, let's go with negative 6. So performing our synthetic division, bring the 1 down, multiply by negative 6, add down, that leaves me a negative 4, negative 6 and negative 4 is positive 24, add down, that's 13 again, multiply by negative 6, we get, let's see, 18, carry the 1, looks to be a negative 78, add down, I get a negative. 66. Remember, he's our remainder. So right now, I know that negative 6 is not a 0. So I'll go ahead and cross him out. We got rid of 6 completely now. More importantly, I can see that since I used a negative number and my signs alternate, including the remainder, that negative 6 is a lower bound. There is no 0 smaller than negative 6. So therefore, I can get rid of the negative 12. OK, so negative 6 is a lower bound. Positive 4 is an upper bound. And now I'm narrowing in on my solutions. Okay, so the next number I'll try is I like ones. Let's try negative one. So we're coming over here one more time, trying negative one using my synthetic division. So my coefficients are one, two, negative 11, positive 12. Bring the one down. As I run through the process quickly, sorry, I didn't change my pin color color over it. So I go through my process quickly. Make sure you do your well, arithmetic correctly. Don't go too fast. So 1, 1, 1, negative 1. That's negative 12 times negative 1 is a positive 12. Let's math one more time. Bring down the 1. I went through this one rather quickly. Negative 1 
positive 1, negative 1, negative 12. Ooh, looked like it was going to be, but not quite. Okay, remainder is 24, so we can, we can see in this case that I used a negative number, but in this case my signs don't alternate, so he's not a zero. But he's neither an upper bound or lower bound. Okay, so the process is to keep trying until you can reach, you can find a zero and you can look at your depressed polynomial. We'll cover more of that in class. Today was just about looking at our list of possible rational zeros, how to set it up, and the upper and lower bound rules. So let's go ahead and finish off and add these to our notes. Here's formally the rules. And it says the upper and lower bound theorem. Let f of x be a polynomial with real coefficients and a positive leading coefficient. And let a and b be non-zero real numbers. Number one, divide f of x by x minus b, where b is greater than zero. So all we're saying here is this is our zero, and he is positive. Using synthetic division, if the last row containing the quote and the remainder has no negative numbers, then b is an upper bound for the real roots of f of x equals zero. Okay, so no zero is bigger than the b. 2. Divide f of x by x minus a, where a is less than 0. Again, this is the 0 we're looking at, and he's negative. has to be negative for this to apply. Use synthetic division. If the last row containing the quotient and remainder has numbers that alternate in sign, and this is important, 0 entries count as positive or negative. Then a is a lower bound for the real roots of f of x of 0. Again, think of zero like a wild card. It can either be positive or negative. And I'll work with the upper bound and the lower bound. Okay, make sure you copy these down in, my, in your notes, not mine, in your notes, and have them ready in class. And we can get through this process. And I'll answer any questions in class. Hope this video helps.